Hello everyone, welcome back to Math Specs. My name is Stephanie and today we are going to continue with an equations practice set. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are asked to check the possible solutions for this equation. A minus zero is equal to five and our given variable is A and our value is five. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute, simplify, and then make a conclusion if a is equal to five is a solution for this equation. So I'm going to substitute first. So whenever I see a and a, I'm going to put five. I'm going to subtract that with zero. And I'm going to say, is this equal to four? On the left hand side of the equation of 5 minus 4, so I'm going to carry out the subtraction, so that will be 5, and ask yourself, is 5 equal to 4? No, it's not. So this is a false statement. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike through my equal sign to say this, these two values are not equal to each other. So my statement is going to be um, a is equal to 5. I'm going to say A is equal to 5 is not a solution for the equation A minus 0 is equal to 4. So just to quickly recap what we did here, we're checking the possible solutions of this equation. We're given a is equal to five as a value for us to, pl to plug into this equation. We simplified it, we carried out our operation, which was subtraction, and we saw that the left-hand side of the equation is not equal to the right-hand side. So a is equal to five is not a solution of the equation. And that's what we're basically going to do. That will be our approach for the next questions, okay? So go ahead and jot this down so that we can move on to the next problems. We are asked to check to see if a is equal to five is or is not a solution of the equation. 5a plus 4 is equal to 26. So again, I'm going to substitute 5 wherever I see a for this equation. I'm going to carry out the addition and multiplication that I see here. And then I will check to see if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to substitute first. I see an a here. And we're told in the problem that a is equal to 5. So I'm going to substitute 5. I'm going to bring down the 4. And I'll write equal to 26. I always like to write a uh, question mark at the top just because I want to remind myself that I'm checking to see if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Now I am. Um, I have multiplication and I have addition. So if you remember our order of operations lecture, we carry out our multiplication before our addition. So I'm going to multiply first. So five times five is gonna give me 25. I carry down my plus four. Is that equal to 26? Now I have 25 plus four. I'm gonna add those two things and that will give me 29. Now ask yourself, is 29 equal to 26? No, it is not. So this is a false statement. It is not true. So for our conclusion, we will say a is equal to 5 is not a solution for the equation five a plus four is equal to 26. Okay, I hope that this is making sense to you. If you have any questions, why did we plug in five? Because this was a value given to us in the problem. Um, why are we writing a question mark? Because we wanna remind ourselves if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. 
why did we strike through this equal sign? Because we're saying that these two things, these two values are not equal. Why did we write false? Because these two values are not the same. And why did we write a statement? Because we are concluding if a is equal to five is, a, is or is not a solution for the equation. So this is basically our overall goal, okay? So go ahead and jot that down so that we can move on to the next example. We're asked to check to see if the given value of the variable is or is not a solution for the equation. And here we are given um, r is equal to 3 and we are asked to check if it is a solution for 5r minus 10 is equal to 11. So again, what we're going to do is we are going to substitute, simplify, and make a conclusion. So I have 5, and I see an r here, and I'm told that r is equal to 3, so I'm going to substitute 3 for r. I'll bring that the minus 10, and is that equal to 11? Again, I have multiplication and subtraction, so I'm going to follow my rules of order of the order of operation PEMDAS and multiplication comes before subtraction. So I'm going to multiply five times three first, bring down my minus 10 and is that equal to 11? 15 minus 10 is going to give me five and ask yourself is five equal to 11? It is not. So this again is a false statement. Okay, and our conclusion, we will say r is equal to three is not a solution for the equation 5r minus 10 is equal to 11. Okay, so go ahead and jot all of this down so that we can move on to our next example. For this example, we're asked to check to see if the given value of the variable is or is not a solution of the equation. And we're given t is equal to 12, and we're asked to check this value for the equation 9 plus 2t is equal to 15. So again, I'm going to substitute, simplify, and make a conclusion. So I have 9 plus 2, and I see a t here, but a t is 12, so I'm going to substitute 12. And now is this equal to 15? I have multiplication and addition, and I'm going to follow my order of operations, which says that multiplication comes before addition, so I'm going to multiply this first. I'm going to bring down my 9. 2 times 12 is 24. And is that equal to 15? Now I'm going to add 9 plus 24, and this will give me 33. Is 33 equal to 15? No. So this will be a false statement. And I'm going to go ahead and let you write the conclusion, because it will look exactly like the ones we've written before. Okay, and the answer will be in the description. Okay, if you want to check your answer, you can go ahead and check it there. Okay, so we are going to move on. So we are asked to check to see again if the given value of the variable is or is not a solution for the equation. And we're given the equation 9 squared minus 5 is equal to 20, and we're given the variable n and it is given a value of five. So we're going to substitute, simplify, and make a conclusion, okay? So we're gonna substitute first. I see n squared here, so I'm gonna substitute five. I'm gonna bring down my minus five and write a question mark above the equal sign to say, is this left side equal to the right-hand side? So I have exponents and I have subtraction. So whenever you're in doubt, go ahead and write down a PEMDAS 
that's your order of operations. I see I have a power here, so I'm going to evaluate my power first before I do the subtraction. So 5 squared is the same thing as 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Bring down the minus 5. And now I carry out my subtraction. 25 minus 5 is going to be 20. And is 20 equal to 20? Yes, it is. So this would be a true statement, finally. OK, so our conclusion for this would be n is equal to 5 is a solution for the equation n squared minus 5 is equal to 20. OK. So go ahead and jot all of this down so that we can move on to our next example. So we're asked to check to see if the given value of the variable is or is not a solution of the equation for 2y cubed plus 3 is equal to 5 and we're given when y is equal to 1. So we are going to substitute, simplify, and then make a conclusion. So I write 2 and then I have y here. So I'm going to write 1 to substitute 1 for y. Bring down my cubed plus 3. Is that equal to 5? So again, I have exponents, multiplication, and addition. So here's my exponent, here's my multiplication, and here's my addition. So I'm going to carry out my exponents first. So 2. 1 cubed is the same thing as 1 times 1 times 1. It's just three factors of 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 is going to give me 1. Now I multiply that by 2 and bring, make sure to bring everything down. When you work on these problems or really any problems, you want to make sure that your work is neat and that you're working um, down. Um, so that you can follow along, okay, when you read your work, so when you go back to study. Okay, so now we have multiplication, we have addition, so I am going to carry out my multiplication first. So 1 times 2 is 2, bring down my plus 3. Now I add 2 plus 3 is 5, and is 5 equal to 5? Yes, it is, so this will be a true statement. So my conclusion will be y is equal to 1 is a solution for the equation to y cubed plus 3 equal to 5. Okay. So go ahead and jot all of this down. Okay, so again, we're asked to check to see if the given value of the variable is or is not a solution to the equation. Our equation is 6d minus 5 equal to 31 and d is equal to 6. I'm going to substitute and simplify and make a conclusion, but this time I'm going to be a little bit more clear. So substitute. So I will write 6 times, I see a D here, so I'm going to write 6, bring down my minus 5 and my 31. I'm going to write a little question mark to, to kind of remind myself, is the left hand side equal to the right hand side? Now I am going to simplify. So 6 times 6, remember your order of operations. So 6 times 6 is 36, bring down my minus 5, and is that equal to 31? So 36 minus 5 is going to be 31, and is 31 equal to 31? Yes, it is, so that's true. And now for my conclusion, I will say d is equal to 6 is a solution. for the equation 6d minus 5 is equal to 31. 
Okay, so in this example, I was just a bit more clear about our approach. Um, you can go ahead and go back to all the other problems and kind of write where each of these steps are. Where did we substitute in the problem? Where did we simplify? And where is your conclusion? Okay, so this is basically our approach for all of the problems and a good um, at home assignment would be to go back to all of the previous examples and uh, write where each of these uh, steps are. Okay, so write each step or just note where each step is in all of our previous examples so that you understand what you're doing. And this would be a really great exercise to see if you can understand your notes. Okay. So hopefully you do that. And of course, you're always welcome to um, write out your steps. Um, and it's very helpful actually when you go back to study. But go ahead and do this. I definitely encourage it. It will be a good exercise for you to not only review the material, but for you to also assess the quality of your note taking, which should always be improved. I always encourage you to, um, to constantly uh, edit your notes so that you get the best possible set of notes for your learning and for your test, for your homework, whatever it is that you need it for, okay? Okay, so that is the end of our practice set for equations. Today we checked a lot of solutions for um, equations and we stated if they were or were not solutions of those equations. Um, next time we will begin our discussion on translating words into mathematical symbols. So it will be a new section um, and we will discuss phrases um, about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and basically taking statements in, uh, in words and translating them to math and what we know them to be like a plus sign. Um, for example, you know, We'll, we'll be discussing things like sum or difference, okay, or product and being able to translate that or for division, we would say quotient, whoops, we would say quotient. And the next section is really gonna focus on being able to take these words and know that we're talking about addition or taking difference and knowing that we're talking about subtraction or when we see the word product, knowing that we're talking about multiplication or when we see the word quotient um, that we're talking about division. And we will talk about many different other words which we you know, may or may not know. So it will be a very exciting section. I hope you can join me for that. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.